The New York Attorney General announced today that her office was suing Donald Trump to bar him from doing business in the state over allegations of what she called staggering fraud. The announcement comes a day after a special master chastised Trump's legal team during a hearing on the classified documents he allegedly stashed at Mar-a-Lago. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. In a pretty stunning situation where the two leading contenders for the 2024 GOP nomination have both sparked lawsuits and criminal investigations. Authorities in Texas announced they're opening a probe into Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's repulsive scheme to lure migrants onto a plane from Texas under false pretenses and strand them on Martha's Vineyard. And now the migrants have also filed a class action lawsuit against DeSantis alleging fraud. It's almost as if they're competing to see who can be more corrupt. As Rolling Stone reported recently, it's a political conflict likely to produce more cruel, ostentatious, and draconian policy proposals and actions as leaders such as DeSantis and Trump compete to out MAGA one another. I can't even begin to imagine what that would look like. <laughs> Walls on both borders? <laughs> Hats that say, make America even more greater again times infinity? <laughs> Remember when Trump used to hug the flag at his speeches like a tourist riding the New York City subway for the first time? If Ron DeSantis tries to top that, he's likely to end up doing something so obscene we'd have to blur it. <laughs> now, these guys clearly already have a lot in common. The shameless lying, bullying, open bigotry, performative spectacles of cruelty, obsessive focus on bull <laughs> culture war nonsense. Even the way they stand is incredibly weird. <laughs> what is going on here? That's the way a stone teenager stands when his mom comes home unexpectedly. <laughs> Mother, uh, you're home. What happened to book club? <laughs> ah, Mrs. Daldry has a cold for shame. Well, <laughs> I'm off to bed. <laughs> Is it only 6.30? Well. The early bird catches the proverbial worm, or <laughs> so they say in the Proverbs. <laughs> At least with Trump, you can kind of tell what's going on, puffing his chest out to seem manly, but ends up looking like he's trying to record all his conversations with a secret microphone strapped to his chest. And just, what was that you said about election fraud? <laughs> can you say it louder and closer to my nipples? <laughs> but for the life of me, I can't, I just cannot figure out what is going on in this picture with this? He looks like an off-brand G.I. Joe action figure you'd get for Christmas from your grandma in a box labeled, I don't know, Swamp Man. <laughs> he looks like a character who gives you your mission in Grand Theft Auto. Hey. Hey, Tony, I need you to go down to the docks and trick some migrants into flying to Martha's Vineyard. Why does he look so nervous all the time? He reminds me of... Ralph Cramden on the $99,000 answer. <laughs> I'm really sorry, you guys. NBC is pushing us to appeal to Gen Z, and audience research tells us that the things 20-year-olds love the most are Fortnite, TikTok, and episodes of The Honeymooners. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it was like the 1950s euphoria. <laughs> I've been told, I don't, I, they just hand us research. So these two undercover men's warehouse mannequins now have another thing in common. <laughs> They've both sparked lawsuits and criminal investigations, but if DeSantis thought he could catch up to Trump at the crime department, he's still got a long way to go, because today, Trump got hit with yet another legal bombshell. New York Attorney General Letitia James announced that her office is suing Trump and his family over allegations of long-running and staggering fraud. New York State Attorney General announcing moments ago her office is suing the former president, his adult children, and the Trump Organization for what her office describes as bank, tax, and insurance fraud. We show that they violated several state criminal laws, including falsifying business records, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud. We believe the conduct alleged in this action also violates federal criminal law, including issuing false statements to financial institutions and bank fraud. We are requiring Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization to, to disgorge the financial benefits obtained through the persistent fraudulent practices, an estimated a baseline at the minimum of $250 million. 
Whoa, $250 million. To pay that, he'd probably have to sell Mar-a-Lago and move in with Rudy. <laughs> I got top bunk, Rudy, you got bottom. But boss, there's only the one bed. That's right, you sleep on the floor under the mattress and keep an eye. You keep an eye out for bed bugs, Rudy, I'm counting on you. I doubt Trump can afford to just fork over $250 million. Something tells me his supporters are about to get a bunch of frantic emails that say, President Trump needs your help to prove the election was stolen. <laughs> Click here to donate $1, $5, or $250 million. The lawsuit also named Trump's three oldest children, and you know what that means? Today's a good time to be Tiffany. I... <laughs> I'm sure there were times you were upset not to be in the inner circle, girl, but when an attorney general doesn't say your name, it's a good day. Live your life. <laughs> of course, even before this bombshell announcement, Trump was also facing multiple criminal investigations for the attempted coup on January 6th, and perhaps more prominently, the classified documents he apparently stole from the White House and stashed away at his private beach club. Now, there's no way of knowing if Trump broke the law, except he definitely did, and it's crazy we have to entertain the idea he didn't. <laughs> No one loses a job and gets to take whatever they want on the way out the door, especially if you work for the government. It's pack up your things, not you're fired. Take whatever mementos you'd like as a token <laughs> of our appreciation for the <laughs> job you did. Also, no one's buying your excuse that you had to pack at the last minute. There's a reason we elect a new president in November and give the old one until January to move out. Of course, Trump spent those two months convinced the election was gonna get overturned. He probably stood over Melania while she was putting clothes in a suitcase saying, I don't know why you're doing that. You're just gonna have to put them back in the drawer when Mike Pence refuses to certify the election. She's like, Donald, please, I wanna get this done. Don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> and then the morning of the inauguration, Melania was yelling into the Oval Office, the helicopter is here! And he was just running around throwing documents into a duffel bag, <laughs> yelling, on my way, Mel, on my way. I'm just, oh, I'm writing a note to Joe Biden wishing him luck. Oh, I don't know when I'm allowed to... I'll take everything, I'll take everything. <laughs> now, one of the keys to proving in court that Trump broke the law, in particular, that he obstructed justice or violated the Espionage Act, which was cited by the DOJ in its warrant to search Mar-a-Lago, is demonstrating that Trump willfully retained national defense information he knew he shouldn't have. And this week, we got some bombshell reporting from the New York Times revealing that Trump was told he was in legal jeopardy if he kept the documents, and he kept them anyway. The New York Times is reporting tonight that a former White House counsel warned Donald Trump last year when he was no longer president that Mr. Trump could face legal liability if he did not return government materials he had taken with him when he left office. The lawyer, Eric Hirschman, sought to impress upon Mr. Trump the seriousness of the issue and the potential for investigations and legal exposure if he did not return the documents, particularly any classified material. Of course Trump knew he was committing a crime. He didn't take the documents by accident. He's not Captain Crunch. The box he took from the White House didn't say, oops, all classified. <laughs> they were clearly marked, all classified. Some of them reportedly nuclear documents. You don't take those by accident. And if you do, you return them ASAP. It's not like when you're hastily moving out of an apartment you shared with an ex and you realize after you move out that you accidentally took her old college sweater and it makes you sort of wistful. <laughs> and you can't help but reminisce, you know, about all the good times you had together. That first time you held hands in a movie theater when you drove her home from a friend's party and just sat in the driveway. Or the time you got a little too tipsy in a lower east side dive bar and walked around the city until the early hours of the morning, the sun peeking out over the Brooklyn Bridge and the <laughs> Hudson simmering with the new light of a hopeful morning. So you decide to text her one last time, just to, just to say hi, just to say you miss her. <laughs> that this might be a mistake, that you're not, you're not ready to move on. And then she responds, you had sex with my sister. <laughs> and then you donate the sweater to Goodwill, because uh, she obviously doesn't have any. Now, you might <laughs> recognize the lawyer in question. His name is Eric Hirschman, and he's most famous for testifying before the January 6th committee with a baseball bat on his wall that says justice, like <laughs> he's a middle school principal in a tough neighborhood in a 90s movie. You try to sell crack in my school, and you'll leave with a crack in your skull, capiche? <laughs> you know, get out of my cafetorium. He's either a very intimidating lawyer, or that's a piece of memorabilia he stole from the Yankees clubhouse. By the way, 
amazing week for New York sports. Huge comeback win for the Yankees last night. The Mets clinched the postseason. The Jets pulled off a miracle comeback. The Giants are 2-0. It's a great time to be a New York sports fan and a terrible time to host a late night comedy show. <laughs> and it's not just sports. I flew out of LaGuardia for the first time in two years and brace yourself, everybody. It's super nice now. <laughs> so I guess the monologue is just like canceled forever. <laughs> LaGuardia is so nice now, even the New Yorkers flying out of it are polite. I bumped into someone because I was looking at my phone and he said, excuse me, but could you please pull your head out of your ass? I felt like I was in England. <laughs> Now, Trump's current ridiculous argument before he moves on to what will certainly be an even more ridiculous argument is that he secretly declassified the documents before leaving office. A Trump-picked right-wing judge intervened to appoint what's called a special master, basically a separate independent arbiter to go through and decide what Trump should be allowed to keep. And that special master held his first hearing with both sides yesterday, where he basically slapped down the Trump team for refusing to provide any proof that Trump had actually declassified the documents. He said he had declassified. Just a couple hours ago, lawyers for the Justice Department squared off with Donald Trump's legal team for their first public hearing before Judge Raymond Deary. He's the federal judge who was appointed special master to review the documents seized in the search of Donald Trump's residence last month. During this hearing, Deary, who was Donald Trump's pick, his hand-selected suggestion to be the special master, told Donald Trump's lawyers to put up or shut up on claims that Trump declassified the records. Here's how Politico describes the hearing. Quote, Judge Raymond Deary pushed Trump's lawyers repeatedly for refusing to back up the former president's claim that he declassified the highly sensitive national security related records discovered in his residence. Quote, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. Well, I'm certain that metaphor went right over Trump's head. If I have the cake, of course I'm gonna eat the cake. <laughs> Sleepy Joe, he wants you to order the cake and just look at the cake, but we're not gonna let that happen, are we, people? <laughs> they wanna take our guns, our Twitter, and our cake. <laughs> Both the dessert and the band. We love the band cake, don't we, folks? <laughs> we love, he's going the distance, he's going for speed, and she, she's all alone, all alone. <laughs> in her time of need. <laughs> Referencing cake and the honeymooners in the same closer look, it's risky. Neither is particularly fresh. <laughs> <laughs> so the two leading contenders for the GOP nomination in 2024 have sparked lawsuits and criminal investigations and seem to be trying to one-up each other in their corruption and cruelty. But so far, Trump is way ahead of DeSantis when it comes to crimes. I don't know if Trump is gonna end up in jail, but if he does, I bet they'll try to break him out by smuggling a nail file inside a cake. This has been... <laughs> A closer look. The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.